<laughs> Good evening, everybody. I am Nathan Chan, and um, we have here a proud. What? What? What do you do? Um, I'm a surrogate. A surrogate, or what kind of surrogate? A proud surrogate. A very proud surrogate. <laughs> okay, we're gonna talk tonight some of the harder things and challenging thoughts. Um, so first of all, I'm Nathan Chan. I am the managing director of Proud Fertility, which is a surrogacy and egg donation agency in Canada. So first of all, Proud Surrogate, I'd like to have you share with us, do you have any children yourself? How old are you? And what made you become a surrogate yourself? Uh, so I have one boy uh, of my own. He's a seven-year-old little thunder. He's amazing and super smart and fun. And yeah. Um, how old are you? I'm 22. So all surrogates have to have a child themselves, okay? And what made you, you're 22 and you have a seven-year-old? Mm-hmm. Oh, sweet. Yeah. Got busy. <laughs> um, Young and now I'm done. <laughs> this is it for me. I don't. 22 and a seven-year-old. Yeah. Wow. I should have yeah. started a lot earlier. Um, <laughs> what made you become a surrogate? Uh, I had donated my eggs two years ago. You're uh, a proud egg donor as I well. I am. I donated my eggs two years ago and I absolutely loved the process. So I knew I wanted to be a surrogate. I just didn't know the right time because of COVID and everything. Uh, my, I have a really close friend who had really hard time uh, trying to conceive her own. And just following her along in that process, I was like, you know what? I think it's time that I do this. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we're going to jump right into the topic that we want to get into. What's the most challenging thing about your surrogacy journey that you're willing to share? Um, the journey itself is honestly a little bit challenging. It's not a walk in the park, but I think the most challenging for me is just I had experienced a loss uh, back in August. I Loss during the surrogacy journey? Yes. Uh, so I had experienced a miscarriage and it was really sad and really emotional and really tested me. Uh, but I think because of that, I feel like this next transfer that I'm doing is going to be a lot more easier and a lot more calming. And I kind of feel like I've wiggled my way around and I know what I'm doing now. Okay. So what, how did that impact you or did you think that could happen? I mean, having a loss? No. So I had got pregnant so easily with my son and I just thought signing up for this and donated my eggs when I did that, they had retrieved so many. I thought, you know what? This is going to be so easy. First transfer, I'm going to get pregnant. And my first transfer didn't stick. So I was just like, oh, and I started questioning myself, preparing for that second transfer. I'm like, what can I do? And I started reading and researching, and I'm just like, what can I do to get pregnant, to help? Um, and then I got pregnant, and I was so caught up in it that the loss really affected me emotionally, mentally. I had to really start to put into perspective that, you know what, don't hone in so hard on it. Just let it happen. So um, just a little bit of side note. Loss does occur even with regular pregnancy and especially even a surrogate too. It's just like any other pregnancy. Yes. And I think that's a good reminder to intended parents who think, okay, I'm going to get someone to help me, but a surrogate can lose a pregnancy too. Yeah. And then surrogates sign up saying, you know what? I've had one child at yeah. 15. <laughs> yeah. You know, 25 years. You know, it can still happen to you too. And you, no, yeah. you kind of need to just know that in advance that it, it could happen. And it, mm -hmm. I don't know if it not that you go in there being pessimistic, but always being open. Open. Be open to cautiously optimism. Yes. Cautious optimism is also yes. important too. I think. Absolutely. Yeah. You don't want to. You don't want to be um, too into it. Where you're like, you know what? This this first time I'm gonna get it, or you know what? I'm so fertile, or I know that my body can do this. We don't know. Our bodies can honestly do anything that they want and without expecting it so that miscarriage to me was really hard uh it took a little while for me to get back but can i ask yeah. have you had any pregnancy losses in like a non non-surrogacy journey related no so okay. i've only had one boy so i was okay. just like that's it like okay yeah interesting um okay I, one interesting thing i wanted to ask was when it's not your baby does it still suck 
Yeah. But, <laughs> Even if it's not your baby, it's your body. But you can't, can you detach it or can you? You, I can. So I feel like maybe it would have been different if it was my own and I had a miscarriage. I would be like, you know what? I'm so put off. I don't want to do this. But because I'm doing it for someone else, I feel like I really want to do this. And that's why I'm trying again because I'm just like, I really want to do this for them. I want to help them. And okay. yeah, but it, it, it is hard. Obviously, miscarriage for anybody is hard. Absolutely. Physically, I'm emotionally. Just questions about oh, that. absolutely. Okay, so you recovered, you talked about that. You know, what are some um, strategies or what and how did you recover and how did you continue? Um, strategies for me was definitely your healthy distraction you were talking healthy about? Healthy distractions. What kind of healthy distractions? So I I had joined a gym and I had a trainer who was helping me and I put my all into it. I absolutely, and now I absolutely love it. I took my time to heal myself through fitness, through eating just a little bit healthier, and it feels good. I feel good now, and now that I feel, I'm feeling better internally, I'm like, yeah, let's yeah. do it again. And some people will have healthy distractions with a coach, for example, or maybe do some extra counseling. Yeah. Or I... Uh, eat more ice cream honestly, it doesn't really matter honestly Just, honestly um the gym is your way but yeah. not everybody else's way no. to make sure do anything that makes you feel more comfortable more you know better about yourself because it is hard it is hard on your body and you want to do what makes you feel good last words um any advice and words you can share to other women considering surrogacy or other women who are on their surrogacy journeys like I said, don't hone in too hard on it. I had put my all on what can I do to, you know, to get pregnant. And you just want to, you, you really want to relax. Don't force it. Just let it happen. It will happen. Just keep trying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And just, it's, it, if it's meant to happen, it's going to happen. Oh, it will happen. I don't know if that makes yeah. any sense or if that yeah. jives with you a little oh, bit. Oh, absolutely. Everybody's yeah. experience is different. So don't base your experience on someone else's. Yeah. Uh, and you're not a failure. So just no. bring back in, like, I was trying to get you to say, are you a proud surrogate? Oh, I'm absolutely proud. But I love... yet, but you haven't given birth I... to a baby for someone else. All of How can you still be a proud surrogate? <laughs> All of this is honestly makes me feel so proud. I love, I love this experience. As hard as it is on my body, I'm feeling so much better about myself. Through this experience and this journey, I am honestly a proud surrogate, even though I'm not pregnant. Yeah. Yeah. That's a really hard identity to really reach. Because I really think that you can be proud as a surrogate if you haven't... It's the whole journey of it. Mm -hmm. Same as a parent, same as, egg, same as an egg donor. Yeah. Things like that. Well, thank you so much for giving us some insight. Of course. And this video will definitely go into our archive. And people will <laughs> love it. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you. Thank, thank you for you. sharing. Bye.